Wanya Al Abdullah. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our moderator, columnist for the New York Times, co-author of Half the Sky, Nicholas Kristoff. Thank you very much. Uh, building human capital a lot across a, a number of, of varied areas, and I look forward to learning a great deal uh, over, uh, over this panel. Your Majesty, let me maybe start with you. Um, I think there are a couple of things in this area that we generally agree on, and one is that one of the most uh, underexploited resources in the world, and and maybe particularly in the Arab world, is the female half of the population. And second, that the way to tap that resource is, is precisely education. And this is something that you have been very, very involved in. Um, I wonder if you could talk about how we go about using education to build that human capital in particular. And, and you know, is it a question of brick and mortar schools? Is it a question of changing mindsets? How do we go about doing that? Well, as you know, um, education, universal ed education is one of the, is the second millennium development goal. Um, we are two thirds of the way to meeting our deadline, but we've only done a third of the job. So at, this, at current rates, we're still gonna have 29 million children uh, not in school by 2015. At the moment, we have 75 million children not in school. And as you heard President Clinton say, this is, the, this is a, a, um, a price tag that we can afford, uh, 11 billion a year to get children to school. As I always say, it's what Americans spend on pets every three months. It's what the war in Afghanistan and Iraq costs in one month. It's what Europeans spend on ice cream uh, in one year. So it, it is something that we can uh, afford. Now, getting people to agree that education is important is the easy part. I'm sure if I went to every single person in this room and asked them whether they thought that education is important, I think I'd be very hard pressed to find anyone who say it's not. So it's a valence issue. It's a, it's very easy to build consensus around the importance of education. So it's no wonder that politicians all over the world always have education as an issue that they raise when they're campaigning. Now, what happens is once they get elected, education starts to slide down their priority list. And the reason for that is that we tend to like the dramatic, we react more to drama. And the benefits of education sometimes don't fit in with the political cycles because you reap the benefits uh, you know, way down the line. But what we need to do is realize the sense of urgency when it comes to education, because education is a matter of life, life and death. Uh, statistics show us that if you educate a child, he is 50% less likely to get affected by HIV and AIDS. If you educate for every extra five years of education of a woman, uh, the child survivor rates increase by 40%. So, so it is a matter of life and death. It is um, a, a lifeline for children. And I actually want to refer to an article that you wrote this summer uh, entitled, Would You Let This Girl Drown? In which you, uh, in a, you mentioned a scenario of a girl drowning with the G8 leaders walking past her. And you said, would they try to save her? And you basically said that they'd probably all jump in and try to save her. So if they're so eager and willing to save one child, why aren't they eager enough to fulfill the pledges that they made that will literally save the lives of millions of, of children. So what we need is a political will. And that will only come from popular will. So we need people to rise up, say that this is very important to them, and therefore embolden the re leaders to move forward on this issue. Thank you. The So in a sense, the challenge is not only to leap into the pond and save the drowning child, but also then to put her in school afterward. And, uh, and give her the right quality education. Uh, and and I, I love the, that statistic you just mentioned uh, about the funding gap in education compared to what we spend on pets. Can you run that by me again? That was too good to miss. Basically, we need $11 billion to get all children from developing countries into primary education. And that's the amount of money that Americans spend on their pets every three months. Wow. Um, and the ice cream one is kind of cool. <laughs> yeah, and that's also Europeans, which like we like one. to... <laughs> three months of ice cream, is that right? It's one year of ice cream. One year, one of, year ice of ice cream. cream. But maybe if you don't count Sherbert, then... Uh, no, uh, never mind. Um, I wondered if I could ask each of you um, to offer us just briefly some kernel of a lesson learned, an area that maybe 
because it is challenging, it hasn't drawn enough focus, um, a area that we should, you know, where we can do better, basically. Your Majesty. Well, I can, I can give you one example from our region that is related to youth. Uh, in the Middle East, you'll find that maybe we are one of the highest spenders on education. And uh, so we've achieved very high levels of enrollment. But when you look at our young people, one in four, on average, are unemployed. And that has created a generational gridlock where our young people are stuck in the transition between school and work. Now, for any young person all over the world, the transition from uh, childhood to adulthood is never smooth or predictable. But in our case, it's so long and frustrating that they end up going into a demoralizing phase of waithood. So they're a generation in waiting. And in addition to uh, that being a really high cost for us, about costs about 25 billion um, a year, it can have a lot of social implications. So take young people who are opportunity starved and uh, there is com political conflict around them and that makes a very dangerous social mix. And as you all know, what happens in the Middle East does not stay in the Middle East. <laughs> so, um, and that has been a failure because although we spent money on getting children into school, we haven't focused on making sure they get the right skills that will take them when they're through life when they get out of school. So it's again focusing on the quality of the education, not memorization or rote learning, but rather uh, decision, uh, critical thinking, problem solving, creativity, those kinds of skills are extremely important to, to empower our young people. And I know that, you know, for example, for me and my husband, if there's one thing that keeps us awake at night, it's, you know, are we, how are we gonna break this? How are we gonna be able to provide for our young people, for our youth? Because youth look at their leaders and what they want is leaders that give them the opportunity to dream and the tools to be able to make those dreams come true. And uh, that's actually fund fundamental for our region to make sure that we undermine um, any radical thought or any rise of extremism uh, and to make sure that we you know, stabilize the, the whole entire region. I just second that point about the importance of metrics of not just quantity but quality. And they can go next uh, based on the kinds of, of things we've been talking about. Well, I think for many uh, over here who are, for example, in the business sector, investigating, in, investing in the education of the communities in which they work has a direct benefit to their own business. Um, because, you know, at the end of the day, the, the, your, your community are your customers, your future employees. Uh, so they, there's a mutual benefit there. And uh, the, when we're talking about quality, um, one of the best ways to get quality into education is to involve the private sector because they understand what their needs are, what kind of skills that are required. So they can help, and this is what we're doing, for example, in Jordan, is really making sure that the people understand that education is not just the government's responsibility, it's everybody's responsibility, including the private sector. And we got the private sector involved, the content of what we're giving our kids has changed dramatically, and I think that that helps them in the future to get the right jobs.